Hello grade fours and welcome back. Um, if you're joining me for the first time, hello, my name is Mrs. Niverson and I'm going to be teaching you natural science today, brought to you by worksheetcloud.com. A reminder that any questions you have about the lesson I am teaching or lessons I have taught, you may send an email to the following address, grade four at worksheetcloud.com and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. So I'd like to start today's lesson by recapping some of the things we went through yesterday. Now on the screen, I've got four questions that if you were with me yesterday and you were paying attention and you, you did the activity that followed, you should be able to answer without any problem. Number one, what is matter? Number two, what are the three states of matter? Number three, what are the properties of each of those three states? And number four, what do the particles in each of those states look like? So I'm going to give you a couple of seconds to think over those questions and then we'll have a look at the answers together. Right, let's get cracking and see how much you can remember. So let's see how many of those questions you can remember the answers to from our work yesterday. So the first one, what is matter? Now remember that's different from someone asking you what is the matter? Uh, what is matter? Well, matter refers to um, the term scientists use about the stuff we are made of. But more specifically put, matter is anything that has mass and volume. And hopefully you remember, mass is similar to weight um, and volume is the amount of space an object takes up. What are the three states of matter was my second question for you today. So hopefully you should be able to tell me that the three states of matter are solids, liquids, and gases. And now this one's a tricky one. There's a lot to remember here. I asked you to recap for me our learning of yesterday about the properties of each of those states. And hopefully you remember that solids are the ones that have a definite shape. Liquids pour and fill the shape of the container they are in. And gases take up the space left by solids and liquids. Now remember, there are certain things that often are misunderstood uh, when it comes to the properties of different states. Solids, not all solids are hard. Remember, although certain ones are, like your table and your chair, we need them to be hard, things uh, things like uh, Play-Doh. So I have here my daughter's uh, Play-Doh that she plays with. This is a solid. It holds its shape. However, it is soft and malleable and I can shape it, but it still is a solid. And remember, there are certain solids that behave like liquids, as in they can be poured from one container to another and take the shape of the container they are in, but they are still solids. Now, you may remember me telling you about them yesterday, um, but I'm going to leave that question with you and say that at the beginning of next lesson, I'd like you to tell me if you can remember what the name of those uh, of, of a couple of examples of solids that behave like liquids. Now, the next bit of recapping learning we did yesterday was to look at the particles within a solid, a liquid and gas. So I'm going to show you three pictures and I'd like you to see if you can tell me which of them below represent a solid, a liquid or a gas. So you've got three pictures there. Have a little look. Look very closely and see if you can think about that. Right, picture number one here the particles are spread far apart and these lines are showing that they are also moving in different directions. So what uh, state of matter do that, does that picture represent? 
They are the gases. In the second picture, I have got particles that are closer together and moving, but also flowing past one another. That therefore shows a liquid. And my final picture here shows the particles very well organized, very close together and strong. Here, it is a solid. So let's see if you are able to tell me which state of matter each of the items below is. Have a careful look at each of them. I haven't put a picture because I think that will give it away too easily, but I will read the words out to you in case you are not familiar with some of them. This one is methane, snow, clouds, orange juice, rain, oxygen, helium and water vapour. Have a very close look and see if you could quickly write down or quickly have a good guess at which uh, state of matter each of them represents. Okay, methane. That is a gas, a very common gas, often attributed to cows in our, um, in our environment, giving off uh, lots of methane, which causes some damage to our environment to a certain extent. Snow. Snow is a solid. Clouds. This one's a tough one. Have a little think. They are a gas. They are made up of droplets of water vapour. Orange juice. Nice and easy. It's a drink, therefore it is a liquid. What about rain? Again, nice and easy. It is a liquid. Oxygen, the stuff that we need to survive, the thing that is given off by plants is a gas. Helium. Helium is what you would find inside your party balloons, keeping them high up in the air because helium is a gas that is lighter than air. And water vapour. Well, if I told you that clouds are made from collections of water vapour, you should realise that water vapour itself is a gas as well. Well done if you got those right. I haven't included any solids, you all know, because that's a little bit easy. So on to today's lesson. Today, now that we are, all know the states of matter and their properties, we're going to look at how those states change. Um, so the title for today's lesson is Changing States. Now, yesterday I gave you a list of scientific words that you could start your science dictionary with that we used in yesterday's lesson. And today is no different. So up on the screen, I have got for you seven words to add to your dictionary for me. Boiling, evaporation, condensation, melting, freezing, solidifying, and water vapor. Again, some of those words are very common and we use them in everyday uh, language, such as boiling. Your mum might say that the kettle's boiling for her cup of tea, or she might say uh, she's going into the freezer to get out some cold um, things to cook for you for dinner. But other words are specifically uh, used in science and those are very important that we understand what they mean. So for today's lesson, let's look at those words and make sure we have all the vocabulary we need to express ourselves clearly in a scientific manner. Evaporation we're going to start with. Now, evaporation is the term we use in science when we describe a liquid turning into a gas. Different liquids evaporate at different temperatures. You can't see water vapour rising from evaporation because it's a gradual process. And a good example of evaporation would be a puzzle, uh, sorry, a puddle, not a puzzle, a puddle slowly disappearing on a summer's day. So if you have a little look at the picture below, I've put there for you, you'll see that the water in the puddle is here and on the outside, the tarmac has been stained where the water is slowly evaporating. And that is happening gradually as the sun heats up the puddle. Now we're gonna learn more about evaporation when we look at the water cycle tomorrow. 
boiling. Boiling is the term used to describe a liquid turning into a gas, which we've just learned is called evaporation, but boiling is done at a fast speed or a high temperature. Different liquids boil at different temperatures. Water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. And you can see steam rising from boiling water as it is a mixture of water vapor and small droplets of water that make it visible. So that gives you a good hint as to what water vapor is. It's um, pretty much steam. Now, you might see this when your mum is boiling the kettle or sometimes if she's got a nice cup of tea or coffee as I do here and it's a nice hot cup, you'll see the steam rising from it. So what's condensation then? Well, condensation is the scientific term for when a gas turns into a liquid. So evaporation, a liquid to a gas. Condensation, a gas to a liquid. You can often see this happening if you've got a nice, warm, cozy room um, and outside is quite cold. When the air outside hits that warm window, you'll get water vapor on the window. Um, and you can often draw smiley faces. It's the same in the car. I don't know if you're like me, but sometimes in the car, I like to breathe onto the uh, windows. If the windows are cool, I create condensation that I can write and draw in. Or maybe after this lesson, you'd like to go to the fridge and get out a nice can of cool drink, like a can of Coke or something. And you will see if you leave it on your table outside, tiny droplets of water start to appear on the outside of the can. That's because the warm air around us has got is full of water vapour and when it hits that cold can, the water vapour condenses back into a liquid. Freezing. Now, earlier I told you that water boils at 100 degrees Celsius, but I wonder if you know at what temperature it freezes. Have a little think, and in a second, I'm going to tell you the answer. Right. What is freezing then? Freezing occurs when a liquid turns into a solid, when we make it very cold and it turns into a solid. Water freezes at zero degrees Celsius. So well done if you've got that correct. When water is put into a freezer, it turns into the solid ice, which obviously we need to keep our drinks nice and cool um, on a hot summer's day. Now, if freezing is when a liquid turns into a solid I, and, and it happens when it's cold, I wonder if you can think about what the opposite of freezing is. That's right. The opposite of freezing, oh, sorry, I've clicked on freezing again, is melting. Melting is when a solid warms to turn into a liquid, okay? Different solids melt at different temperatures and that's important to remember. Water, for example, will start melting when it reaches a temperature higher than zero degrees Celsius. So as soon as you take that ice cube out of the freezer and it comes into the warm room, it will start melting. I don't know about you, but one of the worst things in the, in the summer is to carry a chocolate bar or something in your pocket and then you get it out when it's time to have break time at school and find that it's all melted. I don't particularly like melted chocolate. Some people do, but there you go. It's melted because of the heat. And that brings us on to our final word of today, solidifying. And now you should get a hint about what this word means by its name. It's got the word solid at the beginning. So solidifying is when a liquid becomes a solid. Some liquids do not need to be cold to solidify. Chocolate is a solid at room temperature. It doesn't need to be frozen or chilled to become a solid again. So remember, that not all liquids need to be in the freezer or the fridge to solidify. Now, what I've got here is a little activity for you to do
to see if you can remember everything that we have talked about today. I have got in the top box up here a list of words that you need to use to fill in the blanks. And you'll see that this box leads on to this box, which leads on to this box, and so on and so forth into a cycle. That's important because tomorrow we're going to be looking at all of these words that we've covered today and how they fit into something called the water cycle. So what I would recommend you do right now is pause this video so that you keep the picture on your screen and see if you can make the words fit into the right spot on the, um, in the text. And then what we will do in a second is I will click to the next slide and go through the answers with you. So pause when you are ready. Have you done that? Did you pause me? If you haven't, this is your last opportunity because in three, two, one, I'm going to move on to the answers. Here they are. So let's read this through together. If you boil water to a temperature of 100 degrees Celsius, it evaporates to form water vapor. Remember, evaporation is the word we use to refer to when a liquid becomes a gas. If you cool water vapor to a temperature below 100 degrees Celsius, it condenses to form water. Remember, condensation is the process of a gas turning into a liquid. If you cool water to a temperature of zero degrees Celsius, it freezes to form ice. Freezing is the process of turning a liquid into a solid by cooling it. And that's important because remember, some liquids can solidify and they don't need to be cool to do that. And our last box, if you heat ice to a temperature higher than zero degrees Celsius, it melts to form water. And remember melting is where the process of heating a solid so that it becomes a liquid. So well done if you got them all right, and don't worry if you didn't. That's the purpose of learning. Making mistakes is key to everything in learning. So what are you going to do next for me? So here's a list of things that you can do before we meet again tomorrow. First and most importantly, Go have a little look at the activity I have saved for you to consolidate your understanding of this lesson. It's on worksheetcloud.com and it will be just underneath this video. Number two, try to add those words that we've learned today to your new scientific dictionary. By the end of this week, you should have many words and their definitions in that dictionary. And let's see if you can answer the following questions for me and I will use these as the start of my next lesson. Who can remember which solids in our everyday lives, and they'll be in your mum's kitchen right now, I bet, can behave like liquids, as in they can be poured and they fill the container, the shape of the container they're in. Can you name me one solid that is soft in nature? Now I used, Play-Doh as my example. So let's see if you can think of something different. And lastly, look around you in your environment today when you are having some lunch or dinner later or getting ready for bed or maybe after you've got hopped out of the shower in the bathroom and see if you can see any examples of condensation and evaporation in your house. So thanks for watching me grade four. I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow and have a lovely afternoon.